I have two main branches of research. One is doing numerical analysis with computational fluid dynamics to understand airflow in cities. Without good ventilation of streets and of neighborhoods and environments, you have very high concentrations of traffic-related pollution. Modeling that, as well as measuring airflow and pollution in streets in reality, these are the two main branches of uh, work that I do. Transport is such a complicated problem, so it's not just uh, uh, try to build a uh, try to build a building or build a rocket because because it's involve people. So everything when you involve people, then things become complicated. Currently, we are developing a proposal uh, with uh, TFL Transport for London, where we actually try to look at the capacity and more importantly the resilience of uh, uh, London underground system. What I found over the years is that the biggest challenge is actually relating the physical environment to what people experience when they're walking through it. Um, so what we've seen with pollution is that there are very good um, background measurement networks that provide a very good and accurate and completely scientific measurements of um, different pollutants that affect human beings. Um, but what they don't do really is explain to us uh, if you work in a certain area or if you usually take a certain bus route or if you prefer to cycle to work on a particular busy road, what kind of a pollution are you exposed to and how much of it and how vulnerable you are to it? Oyster smart card data uh, is a very valuable data source essentially because uh, from the, this uh, kind of a data set we can infer the movement of people. So by comparing the Oyster card uh, data patterns during the disruptions and without the disruptions, actually we can identify many hidden characteristics of this uh, behavior, and then we try to come up with a better solutions. How can we actually get a lot of data, but also make something of it? How can we provide meaning with the data, and how can that actually end up um, informing people about what they're exposed to and what their options are? What we've done is usually compare our own measurements with the background measurement um, with the London Pollution Network to see the differences. Once we build the models, once we come up with some optimal strategies to manage behavior, this kind of optimal strategies will not be useful until you are able to implement them. By measuring both pollution concentrations and ventilation of streets, we can inform urban planners and designers on what kind of street configurations are actually very bad for people's health. If the streets are very narrow and very tall, um, air doesn't escape, and then if you also have very high traffic levels in a street like that, people who live on that street will suffer. The importance of uh, engaging a community is to make sure we are solving some real problems. We have to work more with uh, uh, people from other disciplines, especially I think is uh, so people from the ICT, information and technology, and also we got to work with some uh, people with uh, uh, a social science background. But what I'd really like to do is um, to work in collaboration with larger groups of people and draw an experience um, both from urban planning and architecture and from communities. Engaging with community, engaging to uh, the real people, so we always remind us so what kind of problems are actually important. And then this would be, should be the areas that we should focus on. I think this is uh, something important, not just for sustainability or whatever, but I think it's important for, for all academics in whatever areas.